Hi friends, so this sort of video is going to be on how to set up an aquarium, so you might be a beginner and I'm going to go through the cycling process but because the, my aquarium is it's replacing another one I'm only transferring the filter over. Um, so I will go for cycling because it's very important. So the first thing you should do is more what the store should do. You should always make sure the store checks that the glass is not cracked because that will void the warranty. And also make sure the store ensures that everything is in the box because also that can be a bit iffy with warranty. Um, some stores will give you the benefit of doubt, but they won't, won't always. So always check that. So the next thing you want to do is you want to sort of plan where the aquarium is going because it's going to be a hefty thing to move and they are actually really difficult to move um, once you've put it somewhere because you have to drain it down and you don't really want anything in the tank to move because it can shatter the glass. So you want to plan that well. So where would you put the aquarium? So you don't want it near TV particularly. Um, well, not near a loud TV with speakers, but it really depends on how um, you use the TV. If you're using it for loud music, loud games, maybe not. Thankfully, I live in a house of people that aren't loud. Um, the TV's only used for um, sort of watching. No one really plays games particularly. You also don't want it near a radiator. Radiators will heat it up. Um, they probably... I think they could affect the wood of the cabinet and also you generally don't want that the radiator heating up the aquarium and the next thing is you don't want it near doors because doors can slam they can produce drafts and you don't really want that you want your aquarium to be in a stable environment so not to bother the fish so once you've planned it out probably the next thing to do is start building the cabinet um, I'm not sure why there's wood glue there but it's not for building the cabinet. So you want to start building that and read the instructions thoroughly and make sure that the cabinet is built how it's meant to do because you want to keep to that warranty. Um, you also want it to be strong enough to hold the aquarium. So, yeah. So I would always plan ahead and try and get everything done as soon as possible. Um, so I will, before, while the cabinet's being built, because I don't build cabinets, <laughs> because I don't trust myself, I will usually set up the aquarium and make it so everything that is in the box is safe and protected, um, so it doesn't get in the way at all. So I take out the lids. So this, you can see, is the Blue Will Roma 200. And that should contain the lids, as all, most tanks will come with a lid, but not all tanks will. And this very does does depend on the kit. So your it will come with a light. Beta, which is in here, which should be enough wattage for the tank. So this one's a 200 watt heater um, and it's a 200 litre, but I would prefer to get something like a um, a 300 watt because it'll be using less electricity and the thermostat won't be on as much. The next thing should be, oh, this is probably the transformer for the, yeah so that's the transformer for the lights because, not really sure why, filter, oh thermometer I don't like these thermometers I use glass ones because try getting this off the front of a tank and then instruction booklet okay so what do you need for starting up an aquarium so this is probably a shopping list and it will vary on depending on what type of aquarium you have so the most important things you'll need a filter, so this is an internal. You'll need a water conditioner, so this is Seachin Prime. Um, that every brand has their own one, and you can kind of choose which you'd prefer. And you'll also need a test kit 
because you want to see where your cycling is going so you know whether your water is safe really to be adding fish and how much fish and where you are in it the next thing i don't have it on me because i i might have said that the aquarium i'm using previously cycled filter but let's just say you this is a bottle of bacteria so this is what you want to add to the filter to start off a bacterial colony that can process the waste of fish and that bacterial colony can't survive on anything and there are several methods to do it and I'll probably do videos on different methods and which is best but I will always recommend a, a um, fish a system without fish because you don't want to be adding fish where there's toxic levels of ammonia nitrates and um, nitrites sorry because those are toxic and they're harming the gills of fish and could potentially reduce the lifespan of the fish so you can either use it can take a little bit longer but fish food so um just sprinkle bits in and as it decays it will be releasing ammonia and it can be a slower method you can also buy pure ammonia and i can't give the measurements off my top, the top of my head because this wasn't the method that i ever started with um but that is probably your safest method now to use and you want to be testing that water with a test kit to work out where you are on the cycle other things of course a thermometer and depends on the type of fish so you if you're looking at more tropical species that are out of the sort of unheated range then you'll be wanting a heater so this is one but what if you want species that are cooler? Well then, it's not often, but you can get a chiller for that. So lights tend to be optional, but if you want plants, they're kind of a must, and most fish will benefit off them, some sort of day-night cycle. Everything else is kind of optional, so it depends what fish you want. So a substrate is almost always beneficial, and I would always recommend a the sand. These are... These are sort of encourages natural behaviour, especially your fish that dig. You can also get live plants, and I would always recommend them over plastic plants because plastic plants grow algae and cleaning them is hell. You can use a method, a chemical method I'll go over in another video maybe, but live plants tend to outgrow it, and I've never had an issue with them. You can get stones for your comb. You can also get plastic decor. I find they grow algae and their colour sort of bleach. You can also get wood, and I love using wood in aquariums because I think it gives the more natural look. You can get other things like caves, um, and this is more specific to plecos. So that's everything you kind of need to start off. And I'll write in the description a list of the things you need because my video editing software isn't that good. Okay, so once you're filling up, you can kind of start setting up the aquarium, really, because I, it's not something like it's time pressured, but when I've got, I've got fish in the bucket right now, because this is their new tank, so I'm kind of a bit in a rush. So I've just put the lighting unit in, and so this lighting unit, usually, it will come with a cover. So, there. So that's that. So there's also, of course, important filtration. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the filtration. So this is an external filter. So this is outside of the tank. And of a tank this size, which is 200 litres, I would be using external. So this is the Eheim Professional 4 Plus um, 250. So this is going to be more of a temporary filter till I... Um, get another filter that is going to produce a lot more powerful but this is already cycled and it will do for now when I get a new filter I'm going to be putting that media into the new filter but I'll assume this is for now assume it's not a um, so I'll assume it's not um, sorry it's too quite stiff um, assume it's not cycled for this video so I'm going to put it together so there we go and 
So I'm going to put it together and I'm not going to actually plug it in or turn on the siphon till I've got the tank filled because this water I haven't actually treated yet and um, also I don't want the filter running dry because this is not on that high enough level for the filter to run. There you go, so the filter's all set up and so is the light. So the next thing is the heater. So this heater is the Eheim uh, 200 watt. Um, I will be getting a 300 watt one because it's more powerful. Um, but this will do for now. And generally, the minimum you'd want on the 200 litre is a 200 watt for 100 litre, 100 watts. So it would just be working more to produce the same amount of heat, if you get what I mean. So the heater I am going to, usually they have quite short leads, which is an absolute nightmare. So I'm going to reach down here. Now I've got another extension lead here, because I've got two. And I'm going to place the heater. Oh, don't want to smash it because they are quite delicate. So I'm going to place the heater at an angle across a larger portion of the tank so um, more of the area gets covered. And for the purpose of heating up the tank quickly, I will be putting in two heaters. But when you're first setting up a tank, you shouldn't need to, I wouldn't switch the heater on till you start introducing fish. So I would probably turn it on the night before you get the new fish. So one of the most important steps that gets forgotten a lot, and this is water conditioner. So this is going to remove the chlorine from the tap water. And this makes it safe for more the bacteria in the filter. So that chlorine will kill whatever's in the filter. And that bacteria is um, denitrifying um, the waste, make it into a safer compound that you can then remove more easy, well, you, it gets removed by water changes and it's not as harmful as ammonia or nitrite. So this is Seachum Prime, which a lot of people like because it's more concentrated. If you have a hard water tank, you could go for pond water conditioner, but they will raise the... Um, hardness and TDS of your water, so well, the pH, which will depend on the fish you're keeping. So I'm going to add a little bit more than extra. And then that, as the tank fills, that is going to be stirring it around. And I will also add a thermometer. So this one's just a simple glass one. It doesn't stick to the end anymore. But I just kind of like to leave them just in the tank. There, so that I'm going to leave to fill up for now. So while your tank is filling up, you can actually start decorating it. And you can even do it while it's empty. So you can add any substrates you want, sand, gravel, sand is preferred. Um, so I've got loads of wood decor, so I'm going to add this in. It has got a few plants in, but most of my plants are in where the fish are. And I don't really want to disturb the fish while they're stressed out. So this decor is only temporary and I'm going to be doing a video of me redecorating this aquarium. So you can add plants in long before you can put fish in because they are not harmed by the ammonia levels or the nitrates that are in an uncycled aquarium. And the cycled aquarium is one that has the established bacteria in the filter for the fish. And an uncycled one is one that doesn't. Um, and there are cycling methods that could involve if you want to have fish in. You can transfer, you can seed it without the need for liquid bacteria. You can seed it with cycled filter media. But this also comes with its own issues of actually um, finding cycle media. So unless you have any friends that do aquariums, it can be a little difficult. So this wood, you might notice it's a little sparse. It's been eaten by some of my plex. Um, so I'm just placing it in here because it's kind of a temporary setup just for them to give all my current fish somewhere to hide until I get some nicer decor. Because it's not, oh my god, this bit used to be fully solid, so you can't really see it, but they have gnawed away at it almost entirely. That 
It was like a massive chunk, and now it's not. Um, oh, oh, no, now it's broken into two. So I'm just going to place it in a pile. There we go. So I'm just going to let this tank fill. Um, you could be at, start adding plants. Um, you can add uh, the substrates, as I said. Um, I would add plants right now, but can't at this moment of time. So I'll just leave the creme to fully fill. So you've just decorated your creme and you've put in your bacteria. So that's probably the most important thing to start off with. And it's, well, decorating is really up to you how much you want to do it. You can have a bare bottom of creme, which is quite common if you're keeping discus and fish like this. This I have substrate in because it's focused on a mix of different fish. So I'm keeping um, both um, Norcade and Aspirinindae, Aspirinindae which dig in the substrate. So I have a sandy substrate that I added in a few days ago. But when you've just set up your aquarium and you put your decor in and you put in the bacteria and you might be thinking, I really want to put fish in now. And whatever you do, don't. Because you'll be the, the first thing you want to do is you want to look into cycling your aquarium. And you have added the bacteria, but it's not immediately going to colonise to level you can put fish in. And if you do put fish in, there'll be harmful levels of, as I said previously, ammonia, nitrites, and, nit um, and nitrite, um, nitrate, nitrites, and ammonia. Sorry, even I get a tad bit confused. So um, you set up this and you... You've decorated your aquarium and you put in your substrate, the plants, everything like that. And you really want to add fish, but you should really wait. And the reason is, I have stated before, you can put fish in to cycle it, but you're exposing them to high levels of ammonia and nitrites, which are toxic to them. They burn their gills, damage the blood cells. And if you've ever heard of blue baby syndrome, which is caused by, I believe it's nitrites, but generally um, nitrogen compounds which make up ammonia and nitrites. Um, nitrites and ammonia make up nitrogen compounds. Anything containing nitrogen does cause And this is where the haemoglobin is damaged. So you don't want to be adding the fish in yet. And you want to be cycling it so you can make it a safe environment for fish. So you will have added in your bacteria once it's full. Um, first you also have added in the dechlorinator. So once you've done that, what do you do next? And the main thing probably is to wait. And you want a food source for your bacteria. So you could add in fish flakes. This can take slightly longer. Fish flakes, any fish food will work. And this can take a longer process. You can add in pure ammonia that you can get from um, uh, DIY stores and stuff like that. Or, generally, those are the only two methods. There's not really any other way of feed it because you want this breakdown of the food into ammonia to then feed the bacteria so the bacteria can build up its population. And this is important. And how long does it take? Well, realistically, it can take really around two weeks, but it can take longer and generally longer. Which makes aquarium, having a aquarium meaning you have to be really patient. And that's kind of difficult for people. So the fish in cycling method does seem easier, but it is harmful for the fish. There are ways to make it non-harmful, but that is labour intensive. And do you want to be water changing every day for the first month and then slowing that down? Not really. So really cycling without fish is the best way and patience is needed. And having your creme just as decoration at the moment can look nice. You can also, instead of having bottled bacteria, if you know anyone with an aquarium, borrow tiny bits of their media, not enough to crash their tank, but just to seed your aquarium, and then you can feed that bacteria to get it to build. Um, and this is why a test kit is important, because you can measure this cycle. And you should first notice that the ammonia peaks, because the ammonia is being produced by the either the pure ammonia, because that is generally what it is, or as the fish food breaks down. 
and this ammonia will peak and then it will slowly dip as the bacteria break it down in a process known as oxidization to nitrites and this is where an oxygen cell is added on and once that's happened it will get the bacteria will slowly start breaking down also the nitrites and this will then make it into nitrates which you will remove during water changes so this process can take a while and measure once you start seeing no ammonia and no nitrites that is when it's safe to add fish and I would also do a water change before you put the fish in because the nitri nitrates are likely to be high and you kind of want to move that and I'll do it probably just before you go get the fish and the day before you go get the fish turn the heater on because it doesn't need to be on while the fish tank is cycling it is there more for the fish you don't need to put the lights on either that's not helping the bacteria or not helping it's neutral so it's just a waiting process and for the next thing once you've you're ready for fish watch my video on how to acclimatize fish to an aquarium and that will show you how to introduce fish and a lot about different processes of doing it why i don't recommend dripping or having them floating for hours and hours um but yeah so that's generally it um I will also say water changes are important and this is a very important thing to buy with your aquarium is some sort of tubing to siphon out the water and a bucket of some kind to introduce the water in. I have 10 metres of hosing that I get to connect to the sink. I dechlorinate first before the water goes in the tank and that makes it easier for me but you can use buckets um, and to siphon and I recommend a minimum of one um, one water change a week, minimum of 25%, but this will vary on the fish. So this tank gets, um, that tank gets 50% twice a week. This tank, I'm looking at doing one with one water change a week at 50%, but this will vary depending on how it goes. When do you need to change your filter meter? You change it when it, wh is, there's no set thing. It's when it gets clogged enough that it's blocking the flow from the bacteria. And... This can be weekly, it can be monthly, it can be six monthly or yearly, it will depend on your filter. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll do other videos on similar topic and similar topics, mostly towards plex, which might not be your beginner fish, but what fish you consider as a beginner is really up to you and how much work you're going to put in. Um, my first fish were Pistogramma cacatoides, the dwarf cockatoo cichlids, and they're generally not considered a beginner. But if you put the work in, you can keep them. And I wouldn't worry about that. Just do your research. And this uh, video should be where you start your research, not where you watch it and that's the end, if you get what I mean. Just continue going on. Anyway, thank you for watching.